Everybody stand if you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, as we draw nearer to you, as we draw nearer to celebrating the birth of Jesus, our Savior, we light this second candle on our Advent wreath and give thanks and praise to you that we are given hope and comfort and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, and to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> The first reading comes from Isaiah. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord and make straight in the desert a highway for God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall be level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. 
For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out and said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up into a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them to his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep, the word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 and 13. <clears throat> you have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall go down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Our second reading comes from 2 Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promises, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire. And the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? In leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. 
But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him in peace, without spot or blemish. And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated, and I invite our young friends forward for the children's sermon. Hey, good morning, Grant. How are you? Glad to see you. Hi, Liberty. Good morning. Good morning, Alice. Good morning, Abby. Good morning. How is everyone this morning? Good. Hey, uh, so I'm thinking about this first reading we had this morning. I'm thinking about that, and man, I'm thinking about how hard it is to wait for stuff, right? Do you like to wait? No, me either. <laughs> I, do, I don't like to wait. You like to wait? No kidding. Yeah. Well, I should hang out with you and learn something, right? All right. What if, um, well, let's say you're pretty hungry and your mom or your dad is bringing dinner home. Is it pretty easy to wait? Yes and no. What if you haven't seen them for, ooh, they took a trip and you haven't seen them for four days? My dad leaves longer than that. Longer than that? <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay, they've been gone a month. And they're off having fun. Is it easy to wait to see them again? He works. Of course he works. All right. Okay, so when your parents come home and you really missed them, um, what's one of the things that you like to do when you see each other? 
play a game, what's the first thing you do when you see each other? Hug. Yeah, yeah. That's a way that if you're, if you're worried or scared or you miss each other or you've been waiting a long time to see each other, that's something you can do, right? To show you love each other is to hug. Yes? Okay, so, so we've got this, um, this, this reading that um, Tom read to us just a few minutes ago. And here's a verse from that reading. Comfort, comfort my people. Speak tenderly. The Lord will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms. Holding them close to his heart, he will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. When Isaiah says, he will gather the lambs in his arms, who do you think those lambs are? Does God like sheep more than people? Uh -uh. No. He likes, who do you? he likes everybody the same. Yeah. So who does God want to gather into his arms like little lambs? Everybody. People of the earth, everybody, including us. 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 Did you ever think of yourself as a little lamb, Abby? No, no, we don't often think of ourselves as little lambs, do we? <laughs> But we are. We are God's lambs. And God is our shepherd. And a shepherd takes care of lambs, right? And when you're lonely or sad, God wants to take you in God's arms and just hug you and love you and comfort you. Have you ever felt God hugging you? Are you able to feel God's arms? You can feel God's arms? Bedtime. At bedtime, you go, buddy. We're going to talk about being a pastor, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so when you can't feel God's arms around you for a hug, who does God use to give you a hug? Your parents. Your parents? Who else? Your puppy. Your puppy hugs you. Nice. Alice... Can you think of someone that hugs you and makes you feel better? Abby does. Your sister. Sweet. That's good news. Okay, I'm going to let you answer the next one. Okay, so, so we get hugs from our parents. We get hugs from our sisters, maybe our brother. We get hugs from friends, maybe. From pets. That's what Grant said, too. And um, we get hugs from people who care about us. Now, here's the question. And when we started out, who were God's lambs? Who did you say were God's lambs? Everybody. everybody. Um, do, you think, do you think God can hug everybody at the same time? Do you think so? Well, let's try this out. Um, everybody, you stand up. Okay, so... We're going to pretend that Alice is trying to hug all of you. Okay, you all scoot together and see if Alice can hug you all at the same time. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, at the, it doesn't quite work, does it? Yeah, yeah. And we don't even have everybody in the church yet, do we? How does God do this? How does God do, let's go down here. Let's see if we can get some helpers. Do we have any helpers out here to do hugs? Yeah, I thought I had some helpers here. Let's go right down here in front of the baptismal font. Let's go down here. All right, let's see how many people does it take to, to do this group hug. Come on in here. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, let's do this. Group hug. Ooh. Hey, check this out. You know. Help me. Help me. Hey, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes we can't feel God's arms, but sometimes we can remember that God wants to use each and every one of us to do this kind of a group hug and show God's love. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? 
Except when you get too hugged too tight by your sister. Huh? <laughs> okay. Hey, let, hey, let's say a prayer. Ready? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us, for teaching us how to show how to show God's love. God's love. Help us. Help us. To do that all the time. To do that all the time. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for coming up, everybody. <laughs> Would you want a piece of candy? It's up here. Oh, just one a piece. I don't have that many left here. Thank you, everyone. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us all here to this house of worship, that we may join our hearts and minds and, and our voices to praise you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. So most of you know that I grew up in Nebraska. And out there in Lincoln, Nebraska, where I grew up, on the southeast side of the city, there is this park. It's called Wilderness Park. And Wilderness Park was this wonderful place that we got to go for a spring field trip spring field trip in elementary school where all my friends who were very city kids got to learn what an acre actually looks like. We got to learn what poison ivy and poison oak look like. We got to learn how to estimate the height of a tree. There were park guides and we got to go on the trails. And what I remember about these trails is that they were unmarked. That they went through the trees, the dense trees, for part of the time, and they went across just grassland space part of the time. Sometimes there were wood chips to follow, but sometimes it was just dirt. And I remember going back years later and getting lost and disoriented because I didn't have a guide leading me through. In elementary school, we had guides for the trails so we wouldn't get lost. Today, with trail markers and maps to download, with GPS and cell phones, we rarely get lost anymore, do we? <coughs> we are very rarely, we very, very rarely venture into unfamiliar territory without the reassurance of help near at hand. <coughs> And so the words of Isaiah, and again in Mark, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. These words do not cause us to sigh with relief. That we are not lost. Help is coming. But in the days of Isaiah, the people were broken. Conquering armies had taken people away to foreign lands. They were longing for home, longing to return from the unfamiliar wilderness of a foreign land where they were lost and a foreign people. Their spirits were weary and broken, and they were lost and longing for the Messiah, the one who would guide them to safety, guide them home. 
In the time of Mark, the people were again overcome by a conquering army. The Romans had marched into their country, marched into their land, their homes, and the people felt lost in their own land because this occupying army was everywhere as a show of force. There was some freedom in the wilderness But those spaces were few and far between because the Romans had cut highways straight through those wildernesses. These people, too, were weary and broken. And they were lost and longing for the Messiah, the one who would guide them to safety, guide them home. Do these ideas of lost and longing and weary and broken feel foreign to you today? Or do they feel familiar to you today? Those of you who have grown up here, knowing the landscape and knowing the people and knowing the history going back for generations. For you, these ideas of lost and longing and weary and broken, they might feel foreign to you today. Then again, you may know these ideas and these feelings very well. We may know the conquering army as the loss of income or loss of job. We may know the conquering army as loss of health. We may know the conquering army as the opioid crisis that struck just down the street. We may know the conquering army as separation or divorce or unresolved arguments or death. These are the wilderness places of our lives where the trails are unmarked and we could use a guide. Into this space, John the baptizer cries out, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Into this space, John the baptizer announces, the one is coming. He announces, the one is coming. (coughs) You and I. We already know how this story ends for the people of Mark's time. We know the Messiah, the ultimate guide, will be born as Jesus, the babe in the manger. We know that the babe in the manger will grow, and in his lifetime, he will show a glimpse of the kingdom of God, the promises fulfilled, the comfort to the lost. We know that the babe in the manger will set his face to Jerusalem and all roads will lead to the cross. And his death there on that cross will be the proof of God's deepest desire to to draw us close to God's love and keep us close to God's love. So if you are lost and longing, weary and broken this season, keep watch for the messengers. Keep watch for the messengers of hope. Keep watch for these messengers around whom God has sent to be your guide. And let God draw you into a group hug as close to God's love as you can possibly be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
stand, if you're able, as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God. Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray for the coming dawn of joy, healing, and comfort for all God's people. We long to see your glory. Prepare our hearts for your arrival by healing divisions in your church and blessing those who work for reconciliation within it. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your creation. Bring renewal to open spaces, parks, forests, mountains, and grasslands. Restore the creatures and lands that are damaged or destroyed. We lift up before you especially the wildfires in California. Lord, in your mercy. We long for your peace. Make places of welcome for people fleeing violence. For nations facing conflict or crisis, deliver relief. Lord, in your mercy. We seek healing for all people who long for justice, freedom, and comfort. Sustain them in their time of need. Be with all who wait for you, who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those people we've named on our prayer list and those whom we now name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who are ready to help in times of crisis. Give courage to disaster and emergency response teams, police officers, nurses, doctors, surgeons, chaplains, and all who work for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy. We are your beloved flock, and you are our shepherd, O God. Along with the saints already at rest in you, bring us together as your people under your holy rule. Lord, in your mercy. We raise our prayers to you, O God, in the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please exchange that peace with one another.
please stand. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.